So we're exploring hover vehicles in Battletech, and we've been looking at kind of the main push, the main focus of various hover tanks. There's a couple of outliers, extremes like the Saladin, and now in this podcast, we were going to get there. We have to look at it. I believe uh, the Savannah Master. You need multiples. I say multiples because in order for them to work, you need to throw down lots of these little kind of essentially a seat. I think of a balloon. Put a seat on it and mount a medium laser. That's what we're pushing down on the table for 215 battle value with how that can deliver and what that can deliver from that perspective on there. This is something that I won't say tactically. I'm sure there's players out there in the Battletech universe that this is the focus of their strategy. I believe the Savannah Master has a place in your collection just for the fun of it, um, just for the lulls factor. I'd say you want five, six, seven, maybe eight. And again, you're going to scale it up based on battle value, but I find a group of five working together like a wolf pack on there becomes a little bit terrifying for a bunch of reasons. Now, tactically, uh, it follows a similar paradigm to other hover units. You're going to use that speed turn one to set up a vector of attack, literally a straight line in. Usually that's going to be on the left side or the right side of the hex map or the gaming table. So this way, the focus of any mechs or vehicles, the guns are going to be facing forward. You're going to try and attack on that side. Hopefully there's other elements in your lance and in your forces engaging. So this way the hovers are kind of left alone. There might be some skirmish mechs. There might be some skirmish vehicles coming at you, but you're not going to stop. The value and survivability of a hover vehicle is moving the maximum number of hexes. We, we explored this in the Plainsman in last week's podcast, which is up there in the archive on my YouTube channel here, Battletech playlist, pushing all through the mechs and vehicles. The armor, um, with hover vehicles, the armor is kind of when things go bad. Not that you ever want to get hit, but it's to kind of make up for your mistakes. What should be keeping you alive is stacking the hexes So there's um, a pretty big plus something to hit when your opponent shoots. The speed so that also they have to run, at the very least, to try and stay in range on there. So they're also going to start stacking that plus two. Um, Movement modifier on there. Pushing forward, pushing forward, and pushing forward on there. You're going to try and get behind. That's that's the secret sauce. That's the sweet science of everything. You want to try and get behind a unit to be able to shoot. So think of one Savannah Master, think of five, six, seven, or eight of these, essentially working as one unit, essentially working as one mech, kind of like the Grasshopper out there. All those lasers are going on one target. All the Savannah Masters are their own initiative sink in there, their own vehicle, but they're going to leverage on one target. Imagine you're able to move, and they have the same profile exactly, so barring any motive hits or stabilizer hits, you're going to be able to keep up with that little pack, that wolf pack pushing forward. That's five, six, seven, eight medium lasers, medium lasers shooting into rear armor on there. The advantage becomes, if the mech does turn around, how many Savannah Masters can it really take out in a turn of shooting on there? I mean, realistically, it can focus. um, You declare a primary target. You can declare secondaries. There's going to be a slight penalty to hit on that. But unless it's something like the Grasshopper or a mech that has multiple lasers or multiple weapons that it can fire and the heat sinks to deal with it, most mechs cannot cook off everything. I mean, a Warhammer can't necessarily cook off anything. So how many Savannah Masters can I realistically shoot at each turn? This is where tactically things don't exist on a sheet of paper. You look at the sheet of paper, it's really, really weak on there. In terms of armor, one hit is pretty much done. But you have to shoot at it first. How many guns can you bring to bear on that whole pack? And of course, then you have to hit. So there's a lot of gates, there's a lot of modifiers to jump through on there with this group working as this wolf pack. We never want to separate them. We never want to pull them off. We never want to engage one going somewhere else on there. You want to work as a group. Uh, The second advantage 
is that you have a lot of initiative sinks on there. Um, that it, you gain a tremendous advantage fielding Savannah Masters on the first turn or two in initiative, whether you win or lose. And that's going to carry over for the next turn simply because that first turn, I'm going to be, let's say I deploy on my table edge in the center of the map. Probably already want to start on one side, but let's just just say for the sake of this podcast and an illustration why. Turn one, I know where I'm going. doesn't matter when I move. I'm, I'm going to jet all the way to the left or the right side of the table. So whether I win or lose initiative doesn't matter. I'm going to use those to burn the initiative and move all my Savannah Masters over on the side. You're going to have to, I'm probably going to outnumber you. You're going to have to move your stuff, your toys before mine. Then the bulk of my vehicles, the real hit list of my vehicles and mechs, I'm going to know where you are already. I'm going to know those key things that you've committed. I'm going to then move on there. So you gain a tremendous advantage. Turn two, I'm not engaging you yet. I'm zooming up the side of the table, getting ready for that attack run. Again, burning initiative. I'm going to force you just because I outnumber so many on there. This is one of the reasons why infantry, you want to utilize infantry. Because, again, it's a great way to burn initiative. That's going to allow you, just because I have so much stuff to move, even double or triple moving, I'm going to get to see where you move, and then I'm going to move on there. Are they game changers? Well, anything kind of is in Battletech if it gets lucky or scores a hit. But having five, six, seven, eight medium lasers facing rear armor, um, shooting on there, something's going to hit side. Something's going to hit center. Something's going to punch through. If you're shooting at a light mech or a medium mech, possibly even some variants of the heavy mech, I really don't want to take a turn of rear armor on there. And if it does turn to face, or if it's something like a Battlemaster or a Dragon where it has those rear-facing weapons, it's got to hit you first, and you got a whole swarm on there. So tactically, there are some things in Battletech you're really going to love. Some solid, solid units that you really want to play all the time. Then you're going to have your favorite mechs. And then there's just certain things that you want to have in your collection for the fun of it. And the Savannah Masters, um, yes, you could build a list around it. I won't say every game, but... Throwing it down and playing around with it every couple of games on there, it does open up some very, very interesting tactica.